Today I'm shooting a video about the torsion axles in my Forest River R pods. I'm going to timestamp everything. Some of this might apply to every camper with a torsion axle, some of it might not. These are Lippert axles in all three of my campers. I've got a 2020 190, a 2021 190, and a 2021 193. Two of my campers already don't have the original axles. The 2020 190 and this one, the 2021 193. The 21 190, that one's the only one still with the original axle. How long will it last? I don't know. This is going to be about my experience, um, which has mostly not been great, and uh, how I'm going to approach it from now on. I guess I'll start out by telling you the story. So back last fall, I was looking at the uh, looking at the camber on two of my campers, the 21 193 and the 20 190, and I had a lot of negative camber. I'll get a good shot so you can see what's going on with this thing, but it was enough so that I was a little concerned about it. If nothing else, you're going to have uneven tire wear. So. Uh, my first step was, now I know Lippert has an 11 year warranty on these axles. They seem to be a phenomenal company, so despite the failures of these axles, I really like dealing with them, but uh, I just hope to not deal with them because that means I'm not having axle trouble. So uh, anyways, I set up an appointment, I went into the same RV place that I bought these two campers from and wanted them to look at it. And, uh, and you might not care about this whole background, but it just kind of will help you understand why I feel the way I feel about all of this. So I go in there, I pay them like 60 bucks for however much time they spent on it and they come back out and they're like, yep, chip chip, everything's good to go. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, like, look at it. And they're like, no, they all do that. Do you want to see some new campers on our lot that look like that? And I'm like, no, 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 I've got other campers at home that don't look like this. That's why I'm concerned. And that was about all they could tell me. I asked, is there a spec? And they're like, no, there's no spec, it's just good. And so I was not very confident in that response. So, uh, so I, I came home and I dug into it a little bit more. I came home, I contacted Lippert, and uh, I, I you know, wanted to see what they would say about it. And so after contacting them, and you always get somebody when you call Lippert, it's great. There's not many places that are like that these days. Lippert is like that. I call up Lippert, I get somebody on the phone, and uh, begin the process. And so they send me some paperwork to do uh, measuring stuff, check and tow, things like that. They didn't ask about anything. They didn't have me measure anything about the camber and camber would be measured in degrees and I wasn't that technical with it. So what I was doing to measure the negative camber was simply putting a bubble level um, up against the tire, up against the bottom and then making it level and then I'd measure what the gap was at the top. So this averages out to be correct. It doesn't, if your camper's not level, it might be off a little bit, but it'll average out to give you a number. And it was about an inch gap at the top on each side. So there again, this is not the way you normally measure camber, but it was for the sake of getting the info to them, it was working. So I got that info to them and they basically immediately approved, like same day within hours, approved a replacement of axles in both of my campers. So I wound up bringing my campers back to the same place and I was very frustrated with it. Plus it's an hour away. So it's like I drive there and back the first time they don't help me whatsoever. And so now I drive there, drop off a camper. I drive there, drop off another camper. I go and pick up a camper, whatever. Just a lot of driving around. Anyways, I brought them in there. And uh, and, and by the way, I, as I already mentioned, this is dealing straight with Lippert. I wasn't going to Forest River or anything like that. I was just going straight to Lippert. And when you call, they also want like a picture of the tag on the axle, a picture of the trailer info with the VIN, all that stuff. Uh, pictures all the way around the camper. I think they just basically want to ensure that it wasn't in some major accident or something that would have messed up the axle. They also want a picture of something like a level up against the axle to see if there's arc to it or if it's flat or whatever. So that's sort of some of the stuff they're looking for when when you contact them about an axle problem. Long story short, Lippert sent replacements out to the RV place. Um, I dropped my campers off, they replaced the axles, I paid for it out of pocket and then submitted that to Lippert and then they eventually paid me back. It wasn't too long of a process, but it was just a lot of screwing around, just a lot of screwing around. So here we are, this is last fall, so about midway through the summer, these things got the axles put in and they got parked. So they weren't even on the road over the winter in Minnesota. So this spring they go and hit the road and about two months into the summer, um, I see that this one is starting to get some negative camber again. 
So I go out, I snap a bunch of pictures, I do everything that they wanted last time around, and then I contact them just thinking, hey, I can turn this around really quick. And so submitted everything to them. Well, it must be more of the busy season because things were a lot slower this time around, but they came back to me and they wanted, uh, wanted me to weigh the camper. So I went and uh, took it to a scale and weighed it, and it's within the spec that this axle, in this particular case on a 193, 4,400 pounds is the spec of the axle, and I was definitely within that spec. Um, so, so they did wind up approving a replacement, and this time around I decided I was gonna have them ship it to me, and I was just gonna change it here because it's going to take me less time to change this axle out than it takes me to drive it down and drop it off and then go back and pick it up again. That's four hours of drive time there and back, there and back. That's ridiculous. It's not gonna take me that long to swap this axle out. So that's what I did. Where it gets even weirder is Lippert actually brought up like, hey, maybe we should upgrade this axle. And I'm like, well, that's cool with me. Anything to make this not like a yearly maintenance item because that's ridiculous. And they said, but you gotta check with Forest River because we can't authorize a change of a part. It's got to be authorized by them if we put in an axle with a different rating. So I contact Forest River and they were all over the place on it. The lady was helpful, but uh, she basically at the same time tells me, well, you, we, we can't upgrade it. You'd have to pay for that. Well, Lippert isn't going to make me pay for that. They just want to fix the problem. But she's like, no, 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 you'd have to pay for that. So, uh, you know, I can't allow you to upgrade or whatever like you would have to pay for that and she was really hung up on the cost of it and then eventually she said well we can't do that we can't change a part uh, we won't authorize a different part to be put in there and then she also says well have you thought about putting outriggers on it and outriggers are something that would bolt from the frame to the axle further out because right now the frames inboard a little bit so there's a little bit more force on that axle assembly so so then she also recommends doing that i don't know if that's covered under warranty because that's some modification i don't know it's all over the place uh and i just hope that this isn't a yearly maintenance item that i have to replace but here we are today i've received my new axle from lippert uh they sent it out about five days after i talked to them so that was pretty quick and i've actually had it sitting around for a lot longer than that and now it's time to get that thing thrown in the upside to this also is that when you get a new axle it's all new hubs bearings brakes all of that so we're gonna swap all that out and i'm just gonna show you what i've got going on right now what i'm seeing and i'm gonna show you how easy it is to swap out one of these axles so i'm gonna show you what i'm seeing here and what i'm concerned about if we look we'll try and get a good shot of this but if we look at this it might be hard to see in the video but there's definitely negative camber which means that the wheel is angled like that. The top is angled in. And I'm seeing that on both sides. So I'll show you how I sort of so measure. This level up tight against the tire. Now the tire does bulge out slightly at the bottom because the weight of the camper is sitting on the ground. But if we move up to the top, there is a pretty big gap. It is about an inch gap at the top here. And that's with the level level. So now I come around to the other side, I do the same thing. It's slightly less, the camper's not perfectly level right now. So there again, the average of this, you know, I'm measuring the two, and by adding them together, dividing by two, and that gives me an average gap that I'm seeing, which is substantial. Substantial enough anyways, that Lippert has sent me a new axle. So, so here's what I've got for tools for the project today. Um, I'll, I'll update this list if there's anything I miss, but I believe I'll have everything pretty well covered with uh, two floor jacks, two jack stands. I've got two furniture dollies here. I've got the other two furniture dollies under the new axle. Of course, we don't have the new axle sitting here. That goes without saying. And then I've got a half inch torque wrench for torquing down the lug nuts when we're done. A half inch impact, which will just speed up the process. I could have a one inch wrench. I just happened to grab a crescent wrench because that'll work well. And then I've got a one inch socket and a three quarter inch socket. The one inch is for the bolts holding the axle on and the three quarter is for the lug nuts. And then for the wiring, because we've got the brakes, I've got a side cutter, a crimper, a torch to shrink down these butt connectors. And then I've got these butt connectors. I have somehow misplaced one of my yellow ones, but I've got two different sizes because on one of the sides we've got additional wires and they're, they're gonna require 
the bigger butt connectors on the other side. We just have single wires and we're just gonna need the blue ones. So that's the parts list. I'll put links in the description down below. Generally, I would say this is probably a two-man job, but I am kind of a one-man circus. So uh, I'm gonna be doing this by myself and I'm gonna be making up for the lack of a second person by just having a couple floor jacks and all of that stuff. So we're gonna get this thing lifted up a little bit and then we're gonna start the process of swapping out the axle. I've jacked it up. I jacked the frame up kind of in the back here and I put jack stands under both sides. The thing to be aware of, whatever the layout of your camper is, we've got a propane line right here and that actually covers a lot of area. So I obviously put the jack behind that on the frame. Now, I do have both tires off the ground, so they do move, but uh, I actually set the tongue jack down pretty low here, so I could bump this up if I wanted, and it would kind of teeter-totter. It would actually raise the wheels up if I bring the tongue jack up. So that would be an option. doesn't look like I'm gonna have to do that, but I could do that if I needed a little bit more clearance. But now I'm just gonna take the wheels off. Now that I have good access under here, I'm going to cut the wires. We're just gonna cut these. I don't like these connectors. I'm actually gonna replace these, even though the new one came with the same connectors. And then I'm gonna cut the zip ties that are holding this wire onto the axle. And now we've got that wire free. Now I'm gonna go to the other side, do the same thing. You can see I already had those connectors fail over here and I replaced them with some other connectors. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Actually on this side, I'm just gonna cut the wires off the, the trailer brake. We'll leave those together like that. Clip that zip tie, clip that zip tie, get that wire free. Now I'm gonna roll a floor jack under the axle, inboard a little ways. We're gonna lift it up just enough to hit the axle. I'm just throwing a crescent wrench on the inside here. It's a one inch bolt. I'll throw a, an impact with a socket on the other end. Move to the other one. Lift the jack up a hair. And I'll be able to take this other bolt all the way out. Throw the impact on here. And then we'll get this bolt. Double check and make sure there's nothing else attached to the axle. And then we're gonna drop this side down about an inch and then we're gonna go to the other side and we're gonna drop that down onto a dolly. Okay, I'm gonna drop this side down. We might have to work our way back and forth a little bit, but we'll kind of see. Okay, I'm gonna throw a dolly under this side. And then we'll continue to drop it down. Now I'm gonna go back to the other side and we'll drop that down onto a dolly. We'll back this jack off a little bit. Here we'll do the same thing. Now we should be able to pull it straight out. So before I throw an axle back in here, I'm going to put a level up against the bottom of it so we can see how, how the tube compares. So we're just using this as a straight edge here. So if we go on the bottom side, so you can see there's the mount. So if we put this on the bottom side here, we have, try to do this one-handed with the camera, we've got, oh man, like maybe less than a quarter inch, maybe three sixteenths inch gap there. We have, well, it's close. I should probably put a tape measure on it, but this one looks like it could be five sixteenths, a little over a quarter inch. So not a major difference. So I'm not sure if it's the axle tubes that are, straightening back out when they're supposed to have an arc to them, which could be 
in part due to the fact that the bracket that mounts it to the frame rail is a little ways in, a little inboard from this point here. If it had a wider frame on the trailer, that would be less likely to take the arc out of this. But right now we got a lot of weight pushing up over here, which is going to force that arc back out of it. I don't know if it's due to that or just wear and tear or what, but these things are not lasting long. So anyways, that's kind of what they look like side by side. So we're going to get this thing rolled on. In with the new. Now there's no side to side alignment because they only go in one way. They, they go on the outside of these brackets here. So it's pretty tough to screw this up. So we've got it pretty well aligned. So we're gonna roll the jack under this side and lift this side up. Okay. Now obviously we gotta scoot this forward a little bit. We'll go to the other side and work that in a little closer. Get that right in the ballpark. Then we're gonna start getting the bolts loaded up here. We'll do the same thing over here. Line it up as best we can. I'm gonna bump it with a hammer to just center it in these brackets. And we're gonna put a little bit more force on it with the floor jack, make sure it's up tight against the frame. This side is nice and centered, so we don't need to bump this one. We're just gonna raise it up tight to the frame and then tighten the bolts. Now we can remove the floor jacks. What I'm choosing to use to put these wires back together are some butt connectors, some crimp butt connectors, that also are our heat shrink. So once I connect them and crimp them, I will shrink them down and they will seal up nice and tight. So we'll see how our wire length is looking. So this came zip tied to the frame here with a lot of extra wire. Like I already mentioned, I don't like these connectors. I've had a lot of these fail. So we're gonna cut it so we can keep as much wire as possible. Get that stuff out of there. We're gonna strip about a quarter inch. Yes, this is not a wire stripper. Been using wire cutters for a long time to strip wires and uh, one less tool to carry around. Gonna do the same thing over here, about a quarter inch. Polarity doesn't matter on these. It's a magnet, so as long as current is flowing through it, it will work. Doesn't matter which way the current is flowing. So we'll grab, grab the trailer side. Crimp that down. Grab the next one. Crimp that down. We'll give it a pull test. This should not come apart. You should be able to yank on it pretty good. It's looking good. We'll apply some heat to it. We've got a couple big zip ties, just like the ones that were on here. I believe I was the one that put those on because 
I didn't think it was secured very well. I'll try and duplicate what I had going before. Cut off the zip tie ends, move to the other side, and do the same thing. Now we're going to put our wheels back on. I'm going to torque them down, but for now I'm just going to snug them down with the impact. Now that I've got it setting on the ground, I can torque down the lug nuts. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hitch this thing up, take it out for a spin, and make sure that the brakes are working properly.